All right, this first video we're going to go over for a review for pre-calculus. Basically, all the stuff that we're going to learn in these first couple videos here is all stuff that you should already have learned in Algebra 2. Um, the first thing we're going to talk about is interval notation and algebraic expressions. Interval notation is very simple, so we're going to get through that as quickly as possible. We are used to what's called, um, you guys are used to what we call inequalities. For example, an inequality that we probably have seen before, something very simple like x is greater than 2. So um, x being greater than 2, we know, implies all numbers greater than 2. Notice there's no or equal to line underneath here, so that would be any number directly after 2 towards infinity. And that's hard to explain because, you know, some elementary kids might say, well, the first number after 2 is 3. But hopefully at this level we know that's not true. Um, others maybe middle school may say, well, 2.1 is the first number after 2. Well, again, we also know that is not true. So what numbers directly after 2, it's impossible to say it. So if you said 2.1, I'd say 2.01 or 2.00001. So there's no number directly after 2 that we can express. So that's why we use the inequality saying x can be any number directly after 2. So this is what we call inequality notation. So we can also use what's called interval notation. That's the notation that we're going to use to express things like this in pre-calculus. So interval notation can also be thought of um, somewhat of a number line. I'm sure you guys have all seen the number lines as well. So we start here at 2. We're going to use an open circle of 2. Open meaning it cannot equal 2. If we would fill that in, it could be equal to 2. But according to inequality, it can't. And we would shade everything greater than 2. And that's another way you could show with the number line. Well, interval notation uses intervals. And intervals um, use parentheses, and they also use brackets. Okay? So for this particular one, this particular inequality, the interval notation would be starting at 2, comma, going all the way to infinity. So 2 towards infinity would represent all numbers greater than 2. So we say something like x can be any number from 2 towards infinity. Now what about a bracket? A bracket means that you can equal 2, which in this case we can't. So parenthesis implies that you cannot equal 2. So it's just everything after 2. Again, elementary kid might put a 3 right there, but we know there's plenty of numbers between 2 and 3. And don't put 2.1 there. The parenthesis tells us not 2, everything right after 2. So likewise, we can do something like x is less than or equal to 5. So this time, we're talking about all numbers underneath 5, but since it says or equal to, we could fill in 5 and shade everything underneath. So this time we're going to start off with x can be anything starting at negative infinity all the way to 5 with a bracket. The bracket shows you're including 5. Again, you always write these from left to right. Always left to right, like a number line. So the first number we can be, the first number that makes x happy is some number extremely low. I mean, it's, it's infinity, so it's impossible to describe what number all the way down here is the first number. So that's why we start off with negative infinity, showing all the way to the left, comma, to 5. Um, we can also do um, some compound inequalities. For example, x is greater than 2, but it is less than or equal to 10. So this means, of course, that x is any number between 2 and 10. Again, we would include 2 with the uh, filled in dot, open circle for, I'm sorry, we would include 10 with the filled in dot, open circle 2, and we would shade everywhere in between, because x is less than 10, greater than 2, or equal to 10. So as an interval, we would say x can be parenthesis 2, because we're going to start on the left, comma 10, with a bracket. So this interval represents the fact that x can be any number from 2 to 10. Don't get confused and think this is a point, like 2 comma 10 on the Cartesian plane or something like that. Absolutely not. It's again interval notation. Um, we could also do um, or inequalities. So x is less than negative 3 or x is greater than 7. And let's put a little or equal to as well. So again in terms of a number line we got negative 3 open dot, x is anything less than it. Then we also got 7, filled in dot, x is anything greater than. So all we have to do for this one is we have to use two inequalities. The first number that x can be is negative infinity all the way to negative 3, parenthesis, not including. And then we're going to take a break 
Obviously, any number between negative 3 and 7 is not a possibility for x. So we put a little u right there, meaning union, meaning there's another inequality. There's another um, interval that works as well, and that interval would be uh, bracket, almost made a mistake there, made a parenthesis, bracket 7 all the way on towards infinity. So that's how um, those kind of intervals work. So again, interval notation uses parentheses and brackets. It also uses infinities. Uh, a common question a lot of kids say is, would you ever put a bracket on infinity or negative infinity? The answer is no. Infinities always have parentheses. It's numbers that can be included, like the 5 here, or not included, like the 2 here. In infinity is a concept. It's, it's the fact that it goes on forever, so we don't ever use an included sign or a bracket on infinity. So that is a uh, quick rundown there for interval notation. So we will be using interval notation um, for a lot this year, for a lot of things that we talk about. So hopefully um, this is a quick basic understanding of it, but hopefully we will um, learn more and more and more about it. So let's move on here and talk about algebraic expressions. Hopefully you guys have learned what algebraic expressions are. The definition of an algebraic expression is a collection of letters, which are variables, and real numbers, which we call constants, combined using operations like addition, subtraction, multiplication, division, and exponentation. So for example, a real basic algebraic expression is 5x. So we have a 5, which is called a constant, and x, which is called a variable, and the operation going on in between them is multiplication, which we don't have to put the dot there, but it's implied. Another one would be 2x minus 3. That is another um, algebraic expression. Again, 2 and the 3, or you could look at that as plus and negative 3, are the constants. And the years multiplication and subtraction gone as well. But don't forget that you could look at that as plus a negative 3 as well. Now, the difference between these two um, algebraic expressions is how many terms there are. So like right here, terms are anything separated by plus signs. So right here, there's no plus sign at all, so we have one term. Over here, I know that's a minus sign, but remember, any minus sign can be turned into a plus and negative. So here we have two terms. And that's basically the idea of algebraic expression. And again, we could also do 7x minus y. Again, another algebraic expression. Got two variables, a constant. You could look at this as plus a negative if you wanted. How many terms are there? Well, there's only one plus sign. Again, even though you can't see it, it's really there. It's plus a negative. So here there are two terms. Okay, and then from there we could talk about things I'm sure you guys have heard before, like terms. Like terms are any terms that have the same variable and the same exponent. So for example, 2x and negative 3, not like terms. 7x and minus, or a negative y, not like terms. Um, so a like term would be like 3x minus 7x. Those are both like terms. They both have an x to the first power or the first degree. Those can be combined, obviously, 3x plus a negative 7x is negative 4x. So two terms combined to make one term. That's combining like terms. So we can do another one here, 5x squared minus 2x plus 3x squared. Once again, this first guy and this last guy, there are three terms here. The first and last are like terms. They both have an x with a square. So we can combine those. A 5 and a 3 makes 8x squared minus 2x. Obviously, he has the same variable. They both have the x, but this guy does not have the same power, the same exponent. Be careful as well. If I would have added a y to the back of this, there are no more like terms. You have to have the same variable or variables and same exponents. So this guy just has x squared, where this guy has x squared y. So all of a sudden you cannot combine them, and you would have only one uh, or um, three different terms there, no like terms at all there. Um, so those are pretty much the basic rules there for what we're talking about here for um, algebraic expressions. Um, quickly want to go over one more thing, and that is the basic rules of algebra. So we could do that real quick. Most of you guys should be fairly familiar with the basic rules of algebra. Um, one of them is the commutative property. The commutative property says that A plus B equals the same thing as B plus A. Now you could also use the commutative property with multiplication a times b equals the same thing as b times a. Again, that's the commutative property. The associative property would be something like a plus b plus c 
equals, well, we could add the A and the B first, or we could add the B and the C first. So we could add the B and the C first, then add the A, or we could add the A and the B first, and then the C. Basically showing that how we combine them doesn't matter. Same thing with multiplication. A, B, C equals A, B, C. We can multiply the A and the B first, then times the C, or we can multiply the B and the C first, then times the A, and we get the same answer. Uh, we also have one of the very most famous properties, the distributive property. Hopefully you guys all know that one. It's a very easy one. Um, A times B plus C. You could distribute the A to both of those and get AB plus AC. It's a very common property. Uh, it also works kind of with division as well, believe it or not. Um, it's not We don't really have a name for it. We kind of just call it the distributive property with, div with division. But if you have a single term, a single term on the bottom, not two terms, remember, single term, no plus sign, you could do B divided by A plus C divided by A as well. And that's mainly used if we have a single term down there. Now, you could use it if there's two terms. Let's say it's B plus C over A plus W, for example. Well, again, you'd have to use the entire bottom. You can't do B A over C W. It would have to be B over A plus W plus C over A plus W. Because you have to look at that bottom as an entire value, and both numbers up top would get divided by that entire value. You can't split apart that addition right there. Um, we also have another important rule. It's called the multiplication inverse rule. It's a very basic rule. It says that A times 1 over A equals 1. Obviously, the A's are going to cancel. You're multiplying by A, dividing by A, that undoes each other, and you just get 1. But this also can work with algebraic expressions. So if I have x squared plus 4 times 1 over x squared plus 4. You have to look at x squared plus 4 not as two different things, but as one quantity. So this one value, again, we don't know what it is yet because we don't know what x is, but this one value, x squared plus 4, would be the same as this one value. So example, if x is 3, we'd get 3 squared is 9. 9 plus 4 is, give you a second to think about it, 13, right? But if this is the same x, 3, you're going to get the same number down here at 13. So again, times by 13, dividing by 13 would cancel and we get 1. But again, these quantities have to be exactly the same. It does not tell us this. Like if we have x plus 2 times 1 over x, you cannot cancel out these x's. Because x plus 2 is a different number than x. Here, x plus 4, or x squared plus 4, x, plus, x squared plus 4, same numbers. Here, not. This one's an x plus 2. So this one does not work there in terms of that. So those are the basic kind of rules here that we wanted to go over real quick. So hopefully that all makes sense. And that's basically section 8.1 in your book. And um, hopefully that all made sense. If you have any questions, just please let me know.